So, hello everyone. Doors. <laughs> Hi, Alexia. Hello. <laughs> um, right. So I'm going to be talking about the SPDX specification, and the initial title was a deep dive into SPDX version three for and how we advance transparency and security in the software. Uh, I've switched it a little and you'll see the, <laughs> uh, some changes. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Greek, as you can tell by my name. I live in Munich. I'm officially the chief open source compliance officer at Intel, a large American company that you've probably heard of. Uh, I work at the OSPO there, the Open Source Program Office. Um, I've been involved in open source, free software, whatever you want to call it, since before many of you were born. Uh, uh, we didn't call it that back then, but yeah, it's the same uh, idea. And I've been heavily involved in SBOMS and SPDX since essentially the beginning of this whole area. So I wanted, I, the initial idea was to do a deep dive into the SPDX specification. Uh, because I'm very much involved in that, I've started going deep, 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 deep and following everything and yeah. So I can tell you about the 270 uh, different elements in the specification and I can, I started preparing a slide for each one of them and I stopped at 70 slides and I said, no, I, this is not going to be very friendly for anyone and useful for everything. So I took uh, some step back and I'll be talking about the specification in general and the process for generating it and where we are right now, right? And uh, some historical information uh, there. Um, I can definitely go deep and I can have, <laughs> I would like very much to get questions about any small details of the specifications, but this is not what this will be about. Uh, you see the, yeah, I'm very, you cannot stop me from talking about this. So, um, SBOMs, software bill of materials. I have copied things that we were using in presentations more than a decade ago, and this is still all completely valid, right? So we're talking about the SBOM, so as a formal record of details about uh, uh, components and the relationship between them, uh, that are for uh, related to a specific software, right? And we took great pains to explain that when we're talking about components, uh, it's libraries, modules, depending on your ecosystem and your programming language, it might be called differently. We're talking about either licensed open source or proprietary. We're talking about uh, being freely available on the internet, or maybe you have to pay for them and you get a license for them. And the actual data you can actually you know make it widely available or you can keep it yourself or only give it to specific people right all these are uh, inside the scope of spdx right and the essential problem that we're we're trying to solve and we've been trying to solve for many years now is that people do not know what software they're using this is the typical XKCD, uh, that, yeah, it all depends on some component and you better, it's your job to know that you have this component and uh, you uh, want to pay attention to that. Um, so we started this effort and I'll be talking about the history in, uh, in a while, but we started it from within the industry because we all understood that it's the need that we wanted to have and we started collaborating. And at some point, you know, during all these years, regulation started coming. You know, we used to say that regulation will come and then regulation is coming and regulation now is already here, <laughs> right? Uh, in the US, we had the executive order um, three years ago um, for the uh, uh, nations, uh, cybersecurity, and then you have the implementation plan last year. Uh, the EU, as you probably know, we have the CRA that was 
uh, voted uh, last December and came into effect a few months ago. Um, and then we have some local you know, uh, govern, uh, frameworks and uh, regulations in Germany and Japan and stuff like that. Right, so this is definitely coming. Right. So uh, a little background and history of the whole uh, project. Again, the things that we were talking about more than 12 years ago, it's still the same, right? Uh, we want to collect data, right? And these are the basic principles that are still uh, valid uh, for our, uh, all our effort, right? Uh, we want to collect information. Uh, we want to, uh, to be descriptive. Right, we want to be, we want the data to be flexible so that it's automatically processable by any uh, different uh, tools. Right, and we want it to be accurate, but we focus on capturing facts. Right, we do not do interpretation. We may, people may do interpretation based on the facts that we collect, but the SPDX data just record facts about software. Right, and when we wrote this, you know, again, <laughs> I'm referring to a long time ago, uh, this is where our guiding principles and we're still uh, exactly on this uh, path. Uh, during all these years, we have seen widespread adoption of SPDX and I put lots of logos in there and the logos are not randomly collected. Each one of them is followed by a written permission by the company that we are allowed to see that. <laughs> we are allowed to use that, right. Uh, this is definitely something that we have not seen in uh, other cases. I mean, I've seen, even in this conference, I've seen slides with lots of logos that randomly appear. I've seen logos of my own company appearing in different <laughs> slides uh, without, yeah. Uh, having all the processes behind. So we also tried, you know, for every logo and for every company who wants to be, a, uh, to show the support, we do all the paperwork behind to make sure that uh, everything is clean and uh, we can actually use the logos, right? It helps that a large part of SPDX is legally <laughs> oriented and we have too many people uh, very hung up in every legal process, <laughs> to be exactly. Um, the other um, interesting part about the SPDX project is our governance, right? Uh, we are an open project, right? We started as an open project. We definitely started pretty much informally, right? And a group of people who were interested in uh, uh, solving this issue and uh, uh, started collaborating. And in the beginning, we decided, you know, this is not something that we want to use for our competitive advantage, uh, a, comp a specific company, an organization. So let's all work together and make our life easier because this is about uh, uh, collaboration and interchange of information. Right. So uh, at some point along the way, years ago, we have a formal governance document and a formal governance uh, structure, right? Uh, we're always obviously you know, completely open. Uh, contributions by anyone are welcome. Uh, all our work is happening in the open. Uh, all team meetings are anyone can join. All, you know, even the leads of the teams are nominated by the community and anyone can nominate itself. The steering committee is just the people who lead the different teams. Uh, all our work is happening online and uh, we use GitHub for that. We have a specific organization. Even every call, every meeting that we have, and we have lots of meetings <laughs> during the weeks, <laughs> during every week. Um, uh, all the minutes uh, appear online. There is a special repo for that, and you know you can search it into stuff like that. And because we grew organically, and people who were interested in the uh, problem joining uh, joined our community, uh, we have you know participants from all over the world. We have very uh, you know, diverse representations. Uh, we definitely have, you know, large companies, small companies, organizations, individuals, we have everything. And we have 
uh, all around the world and there are communities in uh, different geographies. The milestones that we have done until now, um, that we have reached until now, well, we started 2010, it says there in the autumn of 2010, um, and then we started producing the specification. Initially, it was, you know, uh, very unstructured, and then we're, was, uh, we're getting uh, better and better, better use cases. Um, uh, and then in 2013, we started having the idea that uh, maybe we should have, instead of just a list of things, maybe we can explain that this thing is related to that thing and how this relation works out. So we started introducing this idea of relationships uh, between different things. Uh, and we worked a lot <laughs> on that. And then we reached uh, SPDX2 in 2015. And then we started, then, you know, security became much more uh, prominent and uh, driving force. Uh, so we were doing lots of things in security. We froze the specification at 2.2. I mean, we were producing different versions. And this went sent out to uh, ISO. And it is, uh, eventually 2.2.1 became an uh, ISO standard, which is freely available uh, for everyone to download and use. Right. And then we continue working. We uh, did a major rework to have interoperability between everything in Cyclone DX and SPDX. And then we undertook the change to uh, uh, SPDX version 3, and I'll be talking uh, more about that, which really changed a lot of our, uh, the whole specification. Right. So we have a long history of working with the specification and working, <laughs> keep working on that. Uh, right. And, but our focus, our, our initial you know, guiding principles are always the same. But on the other hand, the focus also changes because we evolve, right? And the environment around us evolve. And I'll be talking about that when I'm describing SPDX version 3. So, um, one, for example, major things that happened uh, during the last year is that we changed the acronym instead of being software package data exchange. We're talking now about system package data exchange. Because, uh, yeah, there are, we're now uh, having the view of it as a complete system, right? It's not only the software, and I'll describe different uh, things that go inside the system uh, uh, more. So, um, who here are familiar with the SPDX specification? And definitely I know <laughs> many of you <laughs> that you are. Uh, All right. So, um, let's start with back. SPDX version 2, where we were a couple of years ago, more than a couple of years, right, uh, had this underlying model of how to describe software, right? We had this whole thing was a document, right? And we were the idea that, hey, I'll give you a document describing this piece of software. Right. Remember that the X for SPDX is for exchange, right? When you give the information about your software to somebody else. Right. So um, the SPDX uh, version 2 said, OK, we have a document. And the document may contain different parts, right? And there might be information about packages, right? There are, and then we had this hierarchy of things. There are packages, there are files, which are usually inside packages, and there are snippets well, that are inside files, right? So if I want to describe the software, I'll tell you this is my whole software, and it includes these packages, and this package includes this file, and this file may include these snippets. We have this three-level hierarchy, right? So uh, we're talking about packages, files, and snippets, right? And then we have licensing information and relationships, because we say, you know, essentially, if I have a package and a file, I have a relationship that this file belongs to this package, right? Or this package contains this file. The same with the file and snippets, right? Uh, 
and then annotation, which is a gener general mechanism of having comments and everything that you want to put in there. And review, because you, know, you get a document, somebody has to review it, and it has a time, uh, a, a, a lifetime. Right. Um, so this is how we started. I mean, even from the beginning, even in SPDX version one, that was the idea about that. We didn't have snippets in the beginning because we hadn't thought about it, but we were talking about packages and files that are inside a software, right? Um, and SPDX version three, we did the major, you know, rehash of all this basic idea, and we abstracted lots of things uh, in order to be much more usable, right? And because the information we started adding more and more information, right? Because the whole idea is, remember, our goal is to provide information about software, meta information about software. And in the beginning, we were interested about licensing information. But then we say, okay, maybe security is also uh, very important. So let's have uh, security information in there, right? Uh, and then we started adding more pieces of information and I'll explain uh, much more of, the, of that, right? But then we said this, you know, monolithic approach does not work, right? I cannot give you a document which will be larger and larger, which will include all license information, all security information, all export information, all these things, because usually the audience is wants to focus on one thing, right? I only care to check about security and don't you know bog me down with lots of license information i only want to focus on something else right or i only want to you know give you the license information but not the security information the security information i'll give you some other way right in a, in a different document like that so the whole idea of spdx version 3 was we want to refactor this monolithic approach of having information and create what we call profiles right so core is the uh, underlying base that everything is based on, and then profiles for each area of interest uh, define the information pertaining to this area of interest, right? So we have a profile about licensing, a profile about security, a profile about provenance, and I'll explain lots of it, right? Um, the other change that we didn't actually plan for it. <laughs> it wasn't a stated goal, but it became evident once we did this, is that this information is not only for exchange, right? Remember, when we were talking SPDX version 1, the version 2 was the X was for exchange, the document that I'll give you in order to describe my software. But now we see that I want to have this information for my own software, even if I don't distribute the software to anyone. Right. So essentially, you know, you can use the same thing, not only for exchanging, but also for storage and processing locally. Right. So the use case a little changed. Right. Uh, so SPDX version three, after years of work, <laughs> was released earlier this year. The first version re was released in well, April. When was it? I don't remember. Hmm? Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, 301, the next updated version where we fixed things that slipped through, uh, was, uh, well, released last week or will be released this week, depending on when we exactly we freeze things on GitHub. But yeah, we don't have any major changes uh, or any changes uh, pending right now. So remember when I talked about um, the view on the SPDX version 2 was the document. Version 3 is completely different and it's graph-based data, right? So you essentially have this information that, hey, this is some information about licenses, this is information about security, this is a relationship between a package and a file. We still have the same ideas behind it, right? The same objects like packages, files, snippets, but everything now is graph-based. Right, and we connect things. And as I said, we have profiles, right? And very briefly, what, and this also helped us 
work on the specification, right? Because there were people who were interested in one, that's why we were calling it area of interest, right? So uh, the people who were interested in security, for example, started having their own meetings and their own discussions without affecting the discussions happening in parallel for people who were interested in the build information and stuff like that. So the profiles that we are actively working on are core and software, which is the base things. And then we we'll definitely have things about licensing, about security, about build information and meta information. And uh, AI was a very big thing, <laughs> right? That, you know, when we started 12 years ago, nobody was thinking about AI <laughs> applications. But uh, uh, right now, as you can imagine, there is lots of interest in that. And then we have lots of other profiles that are in progress, right? People are working on it uh, about safety, uh, about the operations, what we call operations, uh, software as a service. How do you describe software as a service? It's not software that you deliver, but you have to describe it. And then we add more things about hardware, for example, because, you know, when you're talking about a medical device, it makes no sense to only describe the software that isn't there. You have also to describe, yeah, but this one runs on a specific hardware and this is the whole system. That's why we changed from software to system, right? So in 3.0, the published profiles that we did, and I'll start from the bottom up, is the core, and we created nice logos for everyone. <laughs> uh, so we have the core, which essentially defines what in other environments you would call objects and relations and stuff like that, right? The very basic stuff. And then we have the software, which introduces things related to software. For example, as I said, package, file, and stuff like that. Uh, while the core itself talks about artifact in general, right? But in software, we're talking about the artifact is a specific package or a file. Right? Then we have the licensing profile, which uh, essentially does what <laughs> the name says, and this is the, our historical start. We want to capture information about the licensing of every file, every snippet, every package, uh, copyright information, license information, all this stuff, there, because you want to do legal compliance. Right. Then we have the SPDX Lite, uh, which started out from the team working on SPDX in Japan. And this is a minimal subset for supporting a typical industry supply chain uh, workflow. Um, then we have the data, which um, I'm not sure if it, I think we call it data or data set. It, we, we have to fix that. Uh, it's always the same. Um, so how do you describe data? Right. Uh, then it's AI. Remember, think again, we started a long time ago. <laughs> I keep saying that. Uh, back then, when you receive the software, you received software which had the libraries, stuff like that, right? And that's what you want to describe. If now we're talking about AI, right, you have a model which was trained on some data. You have to describe all this thing, right? How was the model created? How it was optimized? How it was fine-tuned? These are completely new things, right? They were definitely not in our radar uh, when we started, they were definitely in, in nobody's uh, 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 radar when we, they, when we discussed software a decade ago, right? But now when you want to actually describe the software that you're getting and you're getting an AI thing, you have to think about all of these, right? Um, then we have the build profile. So, okay, yeah, you're getting a binary, but this binary is produced uh, by this configuration, right? On this setup, by using this compiler with this flag, with these flags and options and all this stuff, right? How do you, so it usually describes provenance, right? And, um, and then of course security, which, you know, was introduced uh, years ago. 
but that's much more for, uh, formalized uh, that uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, vulnerabilities on the software. Again, the deeper you go, as I mentioned, we have different teams working on each one of them, right? And people who are interested are working on each one. And the deeper you go, you find out that I want to be able to express more information about uh, this part, right? So you started out by, yeah, this is a software, and then you say, but yeah, this is a vulnerability for this software, and then you want to also be able to state, uh, yeah, this is a vulnerability about this software, but this doesn't apply in this case because, I don't know, it only applies in this function and this function is never called in this code and stuff like that, right? So you want to be able to describe much, much more information, describe all the, uh, you know, false positive and all this stuff. So, uh, or there is this vulnerability because I'm using this version of software, but I fix it. So you have to be able to explain that or, you know, provide this data. So for each one of these areas, you know, we were going deep and deep, or the teams that were working on that were going deeper and deeper. And that's why, you know, the <laughs> deep dive into everything in SPDX would take, yeah, hours, which we definitely not have right now. <laughs> um, so, um, right now, the whole specification, the published specification, the 3.01, uh, talks about 270 different things right entities or classes or i'll explain the setup that we have right afterwards uh, so you know we started back then with the three things like you know packages files and snippets and a few properties for each one of them right now we have 270 of them and it keeps growing but it keeps growing you know completely organically and the whole way that the specification and the work group, how we work, is if you come to us, explain your use case and tell us, we want to be able to represent this information. And if it makes sense, we'll add it, right? I mean, yeah, usually people who come to us are the experts, right? And they're, taking, they're saying, you know, I'm the security expert. I'm telling you that there is a need to tell you that there is a vulnerability, but it does not apply. Okay, so we exp expand, extend, extend the specification to be able to do this. Right. So, how do we work uh, on all this wonderful thing? Uh, one of the major changes that also happened in the, in the switch between SPDX2 and SPDX3, we changed the infrastructure for the specification. Right. Um, right now we have, we use uh, text files describing everything in the specification, right? Um, and I'll explain them uh, in a while. Uh, so everything is described in text files, right? And what we call profiles can add more, depending if they need more things, or they can affect things uh, on others. Uh, right, so we have all the properties there, but we also have metadata, stuff like that. So, um, this is actually a repeat of the same slide, but better. <laughs> right, so, um, because we are using, uh, the model is uh, based on uh, the standards, WCC standards of RDF, so we're using RDF, all and shuttle, right? So uh, essentially we have an RDF view of the whole world, right? So we have classes, like this is a file, a package, right? These are classes, right? And then we have properties. This is the name, right? And then we say that the file class has a name property, right? Um, then we have vocabularies. Vocabularies are enumerations, right? So if I want to say that, uh, I don't know, I'm using a hash algorithm and I have a list of hash algorithms, so you can choose one of these, right? We do not say 
put whatever you want there because we want to have a restricted set of values. Right. Then we have also data types, if we want to uh, have our own data type. Uh, and we have individual, which are essentially instances of types, if you want to call it in the object-oriented way, right? So there are some things that are uh, there. So for each one of these, we have a summary and a description, right? A very uh, one-line summary and a description describing exactly this thing, which might be a class, a property, and stuff like that. I realize I do not have examples here, but I can switch to GitHub if you're interested in that one. Right. And then we have the metadata, right? For example, as, as I said, you know, the fact that the file has a name is somehow represented there, right? And a file uh, or a package has uh, a download location, which may be optional, right? So then we have the cardinality. And the type is that this is a URI, right? So yeah, for each one of these, uh, we have this strictly uh, described uh, everything in the specification. And then profiles can add their own, right? So software, obviously, as I mentioned, talks about packages and files and stuff. Licensing profile starts introducing things. This is a license, right? And uh, this package is under license under this license. And so it introduces many things, as you can imagine, you know, a, a data set also provides, AI provides new stuff, right? Security definitely more stuff. So the approach that we, um, we also try to automate and help us do our work better, uh, creating this uh, uh, specification. So um, we start with the big picture and we're starting, you know, talking amongst ourselves. We need to express the information about the security vulnerability. Then we translate it, it into uh, the specification, which is a specific text file, right? It's a restricted markdown. And then we have tools that generate the specification in the website, and actually PDFs. Um, the uh, schema, which is the uh, official, you know, uh, in RDF, all and shuttle, the official specification. And then we have other tools that read the specification and generalize serializations, how to save it in a file, right? And code libraries, right? The major part, one of our problems that we had so before we moved to SPDX version 3 was that all of these were not connected. So somebody was working and we were updating the specifications. Somebody had to update the website a little differently. Somebody had to update the code in order, because we we're producing also, you know, code libraries that read and write this data, right? So somebody had to do all this stuff. And now everything is... Uh, flowing, you know, from the same data, so, you know, uh, consistency is guaranteed. Right. Of course, we're not done, right? <laughs> the wicked guy. So, one of the major things, and I talked about that before, one of the major things that came out um, in the last couple of years was this whole idea that while we have the software life cycle where we develop and build and test and release and people install it and they configure and all this stuff, right? Each one of them essentially represents a different view of the same software, right? So when we're talking about SBOMs, the software bill of materials, it's a different view if you're talking about the build part, right? Uh, where you have, for example, all your sources, right? And each file is a source file. But if you install it, right, you only get an executable example if it's in a compiled version, right? So there are different views. So we have to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. And this essentially, you know, uh, helped define different types of SBOMs, you know, that we're not talking about one thing that is SBOM, but depending on where you look at the circle, you have different SBOMs, right? So... And the other work that we did is that, you know, okay, SPDX is on the, defines the specification for the format of the data, 
right? And we provide libraries for reading and writing the data. But then you need tools in front of it, right? Uh, on top of it, right? And we have different categories of tools, and you know we expect uh, the community and open source and proprietary whatever uh, software to appear in order to do all these things. We have most of them, right? And we keep seeing more and more uh, new tools. And this is the classification of tools based on what they do, right? So they can, uh, you know, build or they can translate or merge or make a difference between them. Or you can have classifications based on other criteria, right? And one of the things that we're doing in SPDX is trying to record all the tools and provide all this information so you can have a nice view and you can filter and you say I'm looking for a tool that is open source and it's not it's a complete application and it's you know it handles I don't know npm but not python or whatever right and we keep expanding that so um the whole project is still very much alive and <laughs> Uh, open uh, to everyone. As I mentioned, uh, we have different teams. The, the three main teams are technical, legal, and uh, the outreach team. Right. All our work is happening in main list and GitHub, everything in public. And we have different calls and different teams have different uh, meetings, depending on what they want to do. Right. And then we have these special areas of interest, as we said. You know, people who are interested in AI, they go, they meet, they evolve their part of the specification, and then they bring it back to the uh, general group in order to say, okay, we need this in order to represent AI, right? Build data defects, uh, FUSA, uh, safety in general, and hardware and lots of other things, and information of that one. I almost have time. I'm done. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Questions, please. Discussion, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, decision uh, procedures within the working group, how would you uh, go through consensus, rough consensus, what kind of? Well, the, again, <laughs> in the beginning, it was very much informal. Now we have a formal governance document that explains everything. Uh, from the license that we're using, the community specification license, to how every decision is been made. So it's generally consensus driven. If we have uh, something that you know, cannot be resolved, then the team lead, uh, there is a team lead in each one of them, makes a decision, people can uh, you know, object to it, and then they bring it to the steering committee. And I mean, we have formal processes for everything, <laughs> too many, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have that. The, the nice part for this community is that we almost never have something <laughs> unresolved because at some point, again, remember, our guiding principle is we want to be able to record any information that you care about about software, right? So, you know, if you want us, if you want to add something and you convince, I mean, you, get, you make a reasonable use case, yes, that's what I wanted, we can easily add it, right? Uh, a few things are we're going to add it this way or that way. Yeah, at some point we get to resolve, but yeah, we haven't had major <laughs> disagreements. No. Thanks. Is there any connection to Rex? Yeah, sure. So uh, the um, security part, which is not here, it's in the DCT. <laughs> so. Uh, all the people who are doing the security uh, are definitely in VEX. So, because VEX is the way to actually represent this, right? Uh, we have in the security profile how to represent VEX and how to represent, you know, VEX not applicable, VEX mitigated, VEX, you know, all this stuff, right? And because again, we have a long history, we have different versions of VEX <laughs> VEX 3, VEX 2. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, everything can be represented. Right. Again, it's a representation model. Thank you. I wonder if you would share like some insight as to how like the tooling around an SPDF system helps the specification. 
the tooling around the specification creation. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, <laughs> it was born out of necessity, right? The problem was that until then we were working with documents and then some other people were working with code and some other people were doing the website and the initial start said, okay, uh, let's have the documents and the website much connected, but people did not want to edit you know, HTML, so okay, let's have the, the automatic transition between editing markdown files to HTML, but then somebody had to uh, change the schema and somebody had to change the code and stuff like that. So. Uh, before we started work at 3.0, because we knew that it's going to be a very big change, we say, okay, we scrap that. Uh, and we set up this. It was completely arbitrary. We didn't follow anything. Uh, we knew what we wanted to have, right? We wanted the input and the output. And then we essentially, you know, I sat down and wrote, wrote the thing in, in the middle. But uh, yeah, because we say, okay, we want, for example, the our requirements, if we want to call it that way, is that people want to write markdown or something very easy because, remember, we have people who definitely do not know uh, uh, stuff. I mean, we have lots of attorneys and lawyers who write things about the licensing part. <laughs> and, yeah, even moving them off Microsoft Word was a, <laughs> a step. Uh, and definitely we don't want people to learn RDF and all and shackle because I can generate that. Right. We knew that we wanted to have the specification at the end in RDF or the chuckle because that's the formal way to define something. Right. But we don't expect people to actually create that by hand. So, yeah, that's what we wrote. Sorry. Yeah. This is what I find interesting. I'm really not very familiar with SVDX, but if your uh, source document is less formally strict than the representation you want to. Uh, Yeah, well, okay, it's different, it's not less strict, it's the format is less strict, for example, right? So I'm, I'm giving some leeway here, and the tools make sure, you know, that everything is correct, and they're pro checking all the cross-references and all this stuff, right? So the so, tool can tell you, okay, this I cannot decide, you have to... Yeah, yeah. The tool says, for example, hey, you told me that the file has a name which is a string, but the property name is a number and not a string. And this is a flag, right? Mm -hmm. uh, things like that, right? Uh, but we allow people to write name is a string, right? Mm -hmm. Something like name called string, right? And then, you know, the tool matches all that. It's, yeah. So, so you think it's strongly typed? Or you I'm saying this is a conflict, yeah. fix it. I, uh, I mean, I the tool does not, does not do any resolution or anything right. like that, okay. right? So you just say inconsistent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a CI error because we run this on every commit, right? So, uh, which, uh, and it cannot, it cannot be merged. So you are type checking then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. type checking, yeah. But I'm, I'm not resolving and saying... Yeah, I understand, yeah, right, right. right. But you, yeah. you do say error... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm checking the types, I'm checking the cardinality. If you said it's optional, why do you have it mandatory there? You know, stuff like that. Right. So this is, or the spelling, you know, you call it name and you call it file name. Hey, there's no file name, it's name. <laughs> stuff like that. Anybody else? Hello. <laughs> Every, everything runs on the CI, so uh, on the commit we generate website and we generate the shackle, the ontology essentially, right? And then uh, another tool runs it and generates Java libraries, Python libraries, Go libraries, whatever uh, we have, right? No, no, no. Again, it started. <laughs> It started out from, yeah, I'll write a quick hack and uh, yeah, <laughs> somehow, somehow it works. Right. 
So you wouldn't recommend using that process? I would definitely recommend the whole process, right? But I cannot guarantee that, I mean, this is because of our needs specifically, right? And there are some things, for example, that are not easily translated yet to shuttle, and we still haven't figured out a way to do it, right? Uh, in your things. needs, Rintel? No, 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 in our needs in SPDX, forget the okay. Intel part. <laughs> uh, in our needs for SPDX, for example, in version 2 of SPDX, we had things that say uh, this property is mandatory, but if this flag is false, then it shouldn't appear. <laughs> Some complicated flag, which is not easily translatable and stuff like that, but yeah, we're getting there. Right. <laughs> so this is not 100, I mean, this is not 100% because some things are still expressed in natural language. So that's why the specification is still the PDF, right? The, what will appear in the ISO. Uh, that's the definition. We do not publish. Uh, we publish this, but this is not uh, the fixed thing. Okay. Thank you very much.